get cracking. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Dota 2 Champions League Season 3 Semi-Finals. We've got Team Empire up against Power Rangers. If you're just now joining us, right now Team Empire are two games ahead of Power Rangers and poised to be able to go all the way to the finals where they will meet the winners of uh, the match between Alliance and Fnatic is the other side of the semifinals. So that is going to be coming up soon. But guys, we got to get into this game because, I don't know, I'm feeling like Power Rangers, I expected, I didn't expect them to win. Like, if I had to lay down rares, I would not have put them on Power Rangers. But I do expect them to at least take a game or two. At least one. At least one. So hopefully we're going to see a little bit of change of pace for the Power Rangers. We get ourselves into game three. And as we talk about the draft, let me go ahead and welcome in my co-caster. Real Burrow is going to be joining me once again on the mic. What's up? Hey. Not much. What's up? Where's Yo. my Bane? Wait, where's your Bane? Yeah, where's my Bane, dude? Why Why do you want to see Bane? No, I want to see you Keep talking like Bane again. You have to do the whole cast as Bane. That is when did I ever talk it. like Bane? You have to. D you brought it up. Reserve. You can't run away from it now. When? When? What? Oh, Bane. What? Oh, Bane. I thought you were talking about Bane oh, Elemental. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I was like, uh, uh, you. Well, <laughs> you started with, where's my Bane? I was like, what, you want to see a Bane Elemental picked up by one of these two teams? I, I know, Why? I There's no Marana. If, <laughs> if you were going to correlate it. From earlier? No, I no, because no, because I made the jump to draft. See, yeah, you did. Responsible you caster. Just... I was focused on the game. Nah, you're not responsible. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right. If well... if, uh, if anything, I, I I would be able to talk like a grunt, maybe <laughs> for the whole entire game. You can do IO. <laughs> I don't know how to do IO. <laughs> it's like just, you just know. beep boop. To... You just beep boop the whole entire time. <laughs> All right, man. Let's talk about this draft. We got uh, Furion and Marana banned away by Team Empire, Batrider, and Tree were taken out by Power Rangers. So Brewmaster instantly picked up by Team Empire, the Darkseer, and Disruptor going the way of PR. And Team Empire rounding out their lineup with the Wisp once again. So Power Rangers do have a really good lineup, though, versus the Brewmaster Wisp because they've, they've got the Wombo Combo. They've got the Vacuum into Darkseer Static Storm. So... I'm I'm feeling pretty confident about Power Rangers lineup this time around, but I they felt confident about that lineup. To we didn't see one Dark Seer vacuum into a Static Storm. They did Static Storm always first, and the Dark Seer vacuum never came. Yeah, that's true. So it only came maybe into an Echo Slam onto one or two heroes. That's the only thing I saw last game. Also, it was really underwhelming, and they didn't hit the three or four man. And I think, oh, now I remember. From last game, the tides turned when they fed those four heroes in the middle lane yes. for no reason. Yes. I think that's when the tides turned because it was looking so good. And then until that, so wow, we got the same draft from Power Rangers. Let's see if they can execute it better. So what was their what's their next pickup? Let's see, Morphling, and then it was uh, Earthshaker. No, they did Earthshaker then Morphling, but Earthshaker's been banned out. Which what are they going to replace it with? Yeah, Earthshaker in. Like, there are a few times that I actually feel Earthshaker is all that viable as a support pickup. Oh, no. But this is one of those times. His long-range initiation is actually quite good, being able to set up Disruptor as well as the Morphling and that, that pickoff potential, but as well as the obvious Wombo Combo. But Team Empire, they may have seen this coming, man. <laughs> they're like, they went for the same first two pickups. Who's to say they're not going to go for the same last two pickups? So they grabbed themselves a Doom to try and counter out the Morphling. Yeah, this is looking really bad for Power Rangers. Because... If you thought the last game was going to be run at you with Axe and all this, this time they're going to have even more because they're going to have Doom, Scorched Earth, yeah. Brewmaster with Clap, all his evasion and taking it into his ulti. And maybe they'll go for a Sand King again for uh, a core or something really mm -hmm. weird because Io, Brewmaster, mid, holy cow, that, that sounds scary. I don't even want to think about it. They could do another Lion, Sand King, top, Lane from Team Empire and Power Rangers. I don't know what they can do to stop. Let's go, Power okay. Rangers. Let's let's go back to your roots. Let's see a Vengeful Spirit carry aggro try with they an Ancient Apparition. Aggro, I think Ancient Apparition is your last pickup here. Ten seconds. They remaining. need to go aggro. They need to go aggro. Five seconds. Just yes. like looking at just because of the dual lane. 
Is is that it your? It seems like if fear? they don't get these early towers, they. It's just they keep on finding ways to shoot themselves in the foot by not getting these tier two towers. Right. Like that's the second game in a row where they fell short because of these tier two towers, and I don't know. They just need to find a way to mount the pressure. Yeah, they they are a team that is sometimes flawless, like quite quite actually. I mean, literally flawless at remaining. the five to twenty minute mark. And then tend to fall off after that, which is why the aggressive lineups play so well for them usually when they run aggro tries because they're exceptionally good at the laning phase. But um, you're right. They just seem to be seriously struggling. Like normally they have a little bit of ex a better execution going into the mid game than what we saw last game, especially, which was a huge failure by them time and time again. But... I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we really want to see. So you're thinking Morphling mid, Darkseer safe lane, run an aggro try with the, the, the eventual spirit, the disruptor, and an additional support, which would be, I think, the ancient apparition. Now this is a disruptor mid, Morphling <laughs> safe lane, uh -huh. binge Darkseer can Yeah. Disruptor mid's decent, but I don't think it's enough, especially since there's a brewmaster mid. But mm -hmm. I don't know if they can go aggressive this game. But against the Lich, you kind of need to. You might want to put the Morphling in the aggressive lane and just have maybe Darkseer safe lane or, or mid. Because if Lich is mid, denying your Morphling, it might be too much. So the the only way to secure your Morphling's farm is to go aggressive, it seems like, in this situation. Well, Power Rangers, uh, Team Empire apparently feel it's going to be um, just a standard off lane Darkseer, defensive tri lane, and they still need a mid. So they ban away the Invoker while the Tiny was taken out by Power Rangers. So, I, I mean, it feels a, a little odd to me. I was kind of expecting just a Silent Doom, just a one, uh, one position Silent Doom, but this could be a Mag Doom, I suppose. And uh, Mixed in with the Lich as well, really powerful dual lanes, uh, in which case just a good... Well, I suppose it actually you have to be Doom, like in the jungle, Wisp with the Brewmaster and Lich babysitting the the tiny, but still, just a really good standalone carry that actually does a lot in the mid game would certainly threaten Power Rangers and PR. So they go for the Darkseer Centaur combo. Finally, they get some beef in their lineup that can deal with all these heroes. Seems like they would. That's what they lack in Morphling's. Just he can survive, but if you're still not having another tank, it seems like they've been. Having a hard time, but with Centaur, that's another hero like Axe. As long as he, he if he gets into the late game and gets a heart, he's can become devastating. But still, let's see. All right, Dragonite though. All this tank, and the worst part about having all these heroes on Team Empire is that they still have the control coming from the the Brewmaster. They have the split push coming from. The IO constantly being anywhere, taking out the... And then you have the tankiness of Dragonite with the push ability. So the one bad thing is Empire, they don't have that great of D-push. And because they know how Power Rangers like to pick, they never pick anything to push a tower. They can feasibly get away with it, this lineup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying Empire's lineup quite a bit. Like, they went for really good dual lanes. So it looks like Always Wanna Fly is going to be matched up with Mag in the bottom lane. We're going to have Van Square Baby sitting silent at the top lane and just a uh, standalone Dragonite in mid. So they've got themselves pretty good laning phase. But it's something that we've seen time and time again, which is the triple tank lineup, which is exceptionally good versus these kind of scenarios where the Morphling, you can't go shotgun Morphling. Like, I, I don't, you just can't this game. There are... Three of those heroes are out of question. Like, you cannot kill them in time. So I think you have to go for the more right-click damage-oriented build. Uh, rely a little bit more on your physical damage, which is still going to be an issue, considering the fact that Resolution is naturally tanky versus physical damage due to the high amount of armor that he has. And Doom, while he's susceptible to physical damage early, often compensates for that. Hugely by grabbing a Shiva's or an Assault Curas, depending on which build you want to go for. Possibly even both if you go full Eternal Envy. Well, let's see. We got the Morphling going up against DK mid. That's a really good matchup for Morphling, if that becomes the case. If they go aggressive, 
with the Venge Darkseer Disruptor. They could possibly dive pretty easily, and you just have the Centaur safe lane. Or no, I, I think Centaur should go aggressive, and then probably Darkseer should just go, because then you can always go into the jungle. So I, I think Power Rangers have to go aggressive here. If they do dual lanes themselves, they're just going to be losing out, it feels like, on too much. But I think secure a good start for the Centaur, secure a good start for the Morphling, and well, they could be at the same mid-game they were last time. Maybe a, um, maybe an attempt at a, well, I don't know, like, Moon, I was thinking maybe they could, like, you were talking about how aggro try might be a little bit too risky for them, right? No, I think it'd be really beneficial. Like, if they don't go aggro try lane, they can get the disruptor levels and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, Darkseer is going to be getting levels anyways, if you think about it. True. If they do the dual lane. So, I mean, if he even if he goes off lane, it could be really good for them. Have Centaur get his fast blink dagger in the safe lane. Um, that could be fine, too. And then they can rotate on middle lane on the Dragonite. So, I mean, they have a lot of options they can do. But... As long as the Lich isn't denying the Morphling's farm, maybe, it'd be fine. But I don't know how well this Lich pick is going to work out for them. Now that yeah, I think I mean, about it. Yeah, I mean, it does give them, like, a... Because Darkseer punishes them yeah. just because of their lineup. Mm -hmm. But they yeah. still haven't done anything with the Darkseer punishing their lineup, it feels like. Because he always has these quick mechs. It's just they don't transition into anything. Did he ever get a Blink Dagger last game? I don't think he, he did, did. Right? I, he, I think he had a Blink Dagger last... No, I think he had a Force Staff. Yeah, he got Force Staff. Oh, that's right. He did go Force Staff. Uh, he might have gotten the Blink afterwards, though, but it was just a little too late, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we definitely need to see a better Wombo combo. I mean, especially if you're picking up... Like, these sort of scenarios where they, you grab two offlaners, it's rare to see it where you see the Darkseer and the Centaur together, or another situation was like uh, Clockwork and a, uh, a Darkseer together. It's like when you have those two heroes that are traditionally traditionally two offlaners, but you sort of promote one of them to the one position, you you have to make, be super aggressive in the mid game or in order to actually make the lineup work. Now, they do have some fallback here because technically Morphling's going to be the one. He's just going to be uh, farming up the mid lane to start with. So they do have some fallback going into the late game, but it's certainly going to have to be some really good synergy by the Darkseer, Disruptor, and the Centaur in order to make some of these mid game team fights work because otherwise they're just going to get run over by the fact that Empire have a triple tank lineup that is going to be very tough to get through and on top of that they have really good team fight potential between the brewmaster ultimate the dragonite is really good at about that 20 to 25 minute mark as well so in in general i think that power rangers uh, if they don't hit at least one good dark seer vacuum combo or one good dark seer vacuum into the centaur stun combo like if they don't get something like that then they're just gonna get run over in the mid game pushed down by the dragonite and you're going to get to a point where even if the Morphling does pick up a certain amount of farm, he does pick up his Lincolns, it doesn't really matter because Doom still counters out your your Lincolns pickup rather heavily. Just grab a Blink Tagger, go level death, and then do it. Well, Power Rangers, once again, they're going to be having an amazing laning phase this time around. So it's just, like we said, the transition into this middle game is where they need to find their stride, not this early game because they, they should realistically win every single lane this game mm -hmm. and because of that um yeah like it just empire just relying on their incredible i guess mid to late game over empire seems to be the case in this game now we've seen the uh brewmaster run as a support before i believe me and you casted a game that uh brewmaster was in a four position uh, here we're going to see Brewmaster as the three, and I remember thinking that I didn't really enjoy the Brewmaster's support so much because he got a little underleveled and basically his ultimate just did nothing for them. They either crushed the game heavily and Brewmaster was super effective, but it was kind of because they had already won the game anyway, or he just fell by the wayside because they're losing early and his ultimate didn't do much. What do you think about the Brewmaster being a three here? Hmm... I mean, it's in dual lanes, but the Vinge did pick up the early 
uh, thing. I, I don't know what Vansker is trying to do here. He was he didn't really get this stack, so it's very unfortunate here. But as long as Brewmaster can maybe get some levels, uh, I don't know. Once Centaur gets his boots, though, once he gets the boots before the Panda, it's going to be really bad for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't even have a farm, like, a good way to farm up that Ancient Stack. Brewmaster can't do it, so he's still, like, there's and Dragon no... Dragon Knight, once he gets level 11. Yeah, that's yeah. That's about it. That's once he gets level 11, though. That's, I mean, that's no early... There's no early way for you to be able to do that. So they're still going to be suffering uh, going outside of the laning phase. And Brewmaster, I mean, that's for Dragon Knight, right? Like, Brewmaster doesn't have any recovery mechanism at all. So if he does get shit down pretty heavily in this early laning phase, then... He pulled it way too early again. I don't know what Van Square is trying to do here. So that's two stacks now, kind of like miss. I mean, if you think about it, Power Rangers have no way to really steal it unless he's like five man and double damage rune or something kind of crazy. But is he trying still. to do the um, you know thing where you pull the hard the camp and you wait for the the range creep to attack you? Maybe he's trying to get it to pull the creep wave, like you're saying. But yeah. I don't think that works. That's, I, I have yet to see that, but hey, he does have the right creeps for it, dragons, right? So but I guess potentially could work. Keeps on getting de -aggroed. Well, Dragon Knight's doing really well middle. He's got eight last hits over the Morphling here, so... But... <laughs> Whoa. What is always one of Fly doing? He is way far out. Fortunately, Moon is so weak that he's not actually going to think about oh, FNG, FNG overextends himself. What was that? He's going to be able to get a counter kill. Always oh, want to no, fly dies. Double. All right. So it is worth it in the end. FNG play a little, a little fast and loose there with his hero, but he still manages to somehow sacrifice his life for first blood, but gives a double kill to Moon. He's now level five, so they're looking good in this lane now. That was just a very uh, awkward engagement, to say the least. Yeah, that's amazing for him. Now he's level five. Resolutions only just got level four, and he got um, he's got his boots now, as well as the kill went onto Lich. So not much farm going for resolution in that sense, mm -hmm. but still uh, top lane, Cheshire Cat. Do they have mana burn or something? No. They're going to uh, find him, though. He no, doesn't maybe he can block have him. Oh, no! He doesn't have tangos! Oh. That is, like, one of the saddest deaths I've ever seen in my life. Like, that, that is, is a lane that literally should do... Should not be able to kill amazing. a Darkseer ever. And they still get a kill on How him. How do you, you... If you died as a Darkseer in that lane, that's just... Why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? That's a good point. Moon, got to find a regen rune in top lane, so things just, uh, kind of everything turning up Power Rangers, at least where mid's concerned. Well, Empire Fly... I, He's got the wave for me. He's dead. All right, so they get that pick off, and it looks like I'm keep expecting uh, J4 to try and jump in on Mag here, but he is yet to realize there is still vision there. And so his those rotations from the side, they're not going to be able to catch him out, at least not entirely. He's going to go for Van's core here. Scandal may be close enough. Slowed up by Mag with a good clap, and now J4 is actually going to fall because of that. Mag having that extra movement speed, easily being able to get that kill. And uh, perfectly baited out reaction there from Empire. They knew Vengeful Spirit was getting a little itchy trying to kill that Wisp, and they baited out beautifully with the Wisp getting a little bit low, but the... Uh, jump in from the Lich kind of ensured a, at least a counter kill. Yeah. Because the Disruptor's not down here and trying to help out res uh, help out Moon mid against this Lich dual lane. They're still... They can't really kill, like you're saying. They can't really kill the Panda. That's becoming a problem here. So like I said in the early stages, if they wanted to do something where Moon gets free farm, he would have had to go aggressive lane. Else, they're just going to keep rotating the Lich, just stopping him. Mm -hmm. But... They Always may catch out Lich level. Oh, he doesn't have one it. glimpse. Level one glimpse. Maybe he can get him with the kinetic field though. Always want to fly. Is still getting close. Now he's gonna be able to catch him out. Kinetic field locks him in, and now he can just run along with him. And always want to fly. Realizes exactly what's gonna happen. He's gonna try and run to the protection of the doom. Sends the doom back though. And with the centaur ultimate, they will get themselves away. Bottom lane. They're gonna go for van score. Beautiful tether usage there. That is exactly the kind of synergy you want to see between those kind of heroes is them splitting off. That was excellent team for, teamwork by them. Yep. 
But still, the CS, highest CS going on, the, on for the two of Empire. They're, what will Doom be going for? I think maybe Doom should go for a fast mechanism here, just so they can have the same amount of team fight potential as Darkseer. I mean, where's Darkseer's items? He's bottle crowing, and he still doesn't have anything. So. Empire's gonna make a jump into the bottom lane. They don't have the level six ultimate just yet for Mag and a good stun onto Resolution. We'll kind of make sure they can't do too much here. Disruptor teleports in, wow. but he's just gonna get caught out immediately. J4 goes down as well in the Centaur. The only one left alive after that engagement is gonna oh, be no. able to pop Vanscore, yeah, and that's a good start for him, but he's gonna trade away his life in the process as uh, he gets stunned up. And that's gonna be a tower because of the double damage rune from Dragonite. They have Fortify though. They're going to use it. Do they have ulti on Magno? He's about to get in these creeps. So maybe they can defend this. I don't think so. I don't think they can defend this. They used all their TPs already. Yeah. Yeah, they needed the one of these solos to be teleporting in first, not that disruptor. That was a rather silly reaction from them, trying to think that they could actually, like, Normally, when you, you catch out, when you start teleporting in, when someone dives, normally you look at it and you're like, oh, I've got an advantage here, but that's just not the case. When you are teleporting into support like that, an Empire very clearly have a much stronger team fight potential here, especially now that the Brewmaster is level 6, but just the Dragonite by himself is a huge boom for them in the team fights. They are going to try and go for a pick off at the top lane and see uh, J4 made a rotation, but... Doesn't look like they're going to be able to catch the Doom. He already backed himself away. Hand of Midas was picked up by the Morphling. And uh, no Hand of Midas for Silent. I'm a little bit surprised seeing as he does have so much CS. And he went for the maxed out Devour build as well. Not even splitting some of it into uh, a faster Scorched Earth or anything like that. Well, we got the triple bottle coming out from Empire. Nice of them to want to have a drink here and there. Just, Scandal. Uh, bottom lane. Scandal. Yeah, he's going to be thrown up in the air, Cyclone up, I think, he's soon. Fine. No, he doesn't go for it. So they will be fine, but they might just be able to catch him out as uh, he's going to lose soon. Oh, no, good fine. stun. That is perfect timing by Mag because he's actually going to be able to get himself enough fine. distance. The Centaur ultimate, though, gets the glimpse. Now he's going to be sent back. Kinetic field held in, and that should be a rather easy kill for them to be able to grab. They rotate well, that's four worth heroes. It, though, because they're getting the mid tower mid. Uh, the mid tower. Yeah. So. All well those worth heroes. It. And they're gonna oh, get a pick. Shush your cat. No, no, he's. They don't focus on him. They instead just focus on being able to claim that tier one tower and instead of trying to go for the tankier off laner. You're, but yeah, you're right you might though. Shush your cat. Even right now, mm -hmm. but really, it's way ahead for Empire in the long run. Holy cow! I just looked at that gold graph. I can't believe it's that much. I thought it was like three thousand, but still, they're getting all these towers, and they're just. Uh, they're just farming better, it feels like. Yeah, but. absolutely. Dark's here, you're right. I'm I'm questioning where his items are. He's got 1,400 gold, so it looks like he's trying to save up for the quick, quick mech, um, since he already is feeling the pressure, so no boots, nothing like that. Uh, just going straight for the mech, which I do agree with, but I feel like he should have it already. Just because yeah. the lane was relatively easy for him. He's sitting at 4 2 and 1, so his CS isn't terrible, that's for sure. Alright, maybe they can get their first tower of the game up maybe. here. Blink Dagger now on Scandal. Doesn't have the ulti for 10 seconds. There's a level 3 Venge here, which is really bad for Power Rangers, but FNG's 5. Still not 6, though, and there's initiation. Stop. Now the follow up. Vance Core doesn't have the relocate, so he won't be able to save Silent. Quick kill there. And now just going to rotate themselves away. So no tower, that's for sure. At least not yet. But uh, they do at least get a good pick off, and they need those kind of kills. Not only just for the obvious presence. Oh, two-man stomp, two-man coil as well. Vance Core able to keep himself alive, and the Centaur dies as he already brought his health so low. That one simple nuke. Now they're going to get another kill as FNG is going to be caught in the process. Resolution making quick rotation over, and with a haste rune. Ensuring that kill, just very silly play from Power Rangers. Very uncharacteristic of them to be losing the laning phase like this. Yeah, that, that kill is just giving back all the momentum that they just earned from killing that level 9 Doom. Getting all that EXP on those heroes that they needed. You're just giving it right back for no reason. Mm -hmm. Just overextending for like absolutely no reason. So, Doom got his drums up. I mean...
They can even pressure this top lane now. Resolution has his ulti up. Does Doom have a TP top? Ooh. It's probably on cooldown, I assume, but he's gonna pick uh, one up here. I don't know how you feel about that one, man, but just your cat grabbing the Midas, I can't That's say I'm so a fan. so bad. That is, I mean, they're already kind of getting crushed. I mean, well, let, their let's just- Their lanes are just, I mean, it's, just, it's not the, that they're losing out on gold so much, it's just their map control is just getting destroyed. Yeah. In the meantime, we do have more team fight items being picked Holy up by cow. Empire. They get themselves Mana Boots and Blink Dagger for the offlane Panda, so he's actually sitting pretty. Like, he's actually got really good farm. You have a full-on mech being picked up by Always Wanna Fly. Honestly, Empire just five-man the whole entire time. There shouldn't be really anything stopping them from taking these Tier 2s. <laughs> Silence going back for a late Midas here, but he can do that. He probably saw the Midas's on the enemy team. He's like, all right, you want to play Midas's? We have, I th uh, like, we have the better team fight right now. We have the better team fight probably in the late game, depending on how well the combo comes from the Dark Seer and the Disruptor. Mm -hmm. But as long as they get their BKBs, um, Power Rangers can't do diddly. Yeah. Well, I'm so going to think heroes. happy thoughts for, for Power Rangers, and I'm going to say it's uncharacteristic of them to be losing the laning phase, which means they're going to make a big comeback and actually perform really well in the mid to late game, which is something right. that they <laughs> kind of suffered before. I'm just just hoping that's what's going to happen anyway. Cheshire Cat makes sure he doesn't get picked off uh, at the bottom lane. Really needs those levels, though. They, they need the maxed out vacuum. That's like what their whole entire combo relies on right now. It's the only way for them to actually be able to win these team fights because, again, these heroes are so tanky and they're so underleveled. They do not have the nuking power by itself. But if maybe if they get a big AoE vacuum into the stomp, into a big double edge. and Oh, they have the risk relocate oh, on top no. lane here. It's going to be coming. The immediate Static Storm goes, does go down, and that's going to be a great play by him, but it's nothing compared to the just five-man rotation from Empire, just completely overwhelming Power Rangers in the process. They get two supports, and in the process lose a Tier 1 middle tower. Honestly, that's not bad for Power Rangers, solely because of the fact they got the Centaur away from that engagement. Right, and they pop the Pandolti, and they're split-pushing it up, which they need to do. Finally, they get a tower in this in this game, which they desperately needed, but still, uh, I mean, this tier two tower top should be going down, though. It feels yeah. like as long as Resolution can get over there in time before this team fight happens. Well, they're actually going to try and fight this. So they they know there was a rotation earlier. Two man stomp leading with that one. They know Mag doesn't have his ultimate, but the chain frost comes out. Oh no, they're in a bad position for that one. Bouncing around, the wall will be able to intercept some of it. Looks like the chain has gone down, but the dragon has come in from behind. Cheshire Cat already going down. Doom is up on Moon, but it looks like he's gonna be fine. Maybe not. The dragon's still here. He's gonna be able to pop that morphling. Resolution sitting underneath this tier two tower, but he honestly just does not care. It's only the two supports left. Turn around the stun. Maybe they can get the kill. J4 swaps, but it's not quite enough. Resolution still being kept alive, and the Wisp will ensure that he gets away. So tier one tower does fall 9 to 14, 15 minutes in, and Empire continue their rampage is now ensuring this tier two tower, at least making it very, very low in the process. Centaur can try and teleport in. But oh, maybe Static Storm, where's the teleport? Where is it? The tower's gonna fall, and Centaur doesn't make his way over in time. I'm not sure why he didn't try and teleport there when FNG was clearly going to attempt to go. And he's not well, even gonna have enough mana for the glimpse either, so. Nice mechanism. I mean, now they can just, most likely they'll go do Roche next, or they can just pressure another tier a tower, yeah, fighting without the Disruptor ulti there, but they had to do it. I mean, that was the perfect opportunity. They got the Panda. His ulti was down as well, though, but they're just too far ahead. Midas on Darkseer not paying off in that fight, clearly because they didn't have a mechanism, and the enemy team has a mech. It's just a really bad decision all around for a Darkseer to go to Midas this game. That's If you look back on this game, that is the one reason why they, they will lose this game. It's just because... They don't have that sustain that we were talking about. Empire going to be making a rotation to the bottom lane. Try and catch out Cheshire Cat. Not going to catch him in time, though. No stun or cyclone. And wow. that's still a Brewmaster ultimate going down. FNG. Oh, poor guy. 
He was hoping. He was hoping he wouldn't be found, but... So they do get a kill there. That's still Brewmaster Ultimate going down. Again, the split push is happening. Moon is desperately trying to push in this middle lane as fast as he can, but it's not going to be fast enough. Not enough to threaten that Tier 2 tower before Empire take this bottom one. Yep. Dragon Knight ulti up. Still Brewmaster ulti, though. Eh. I mean, Brewmaster needs still level 11. He's only level 9 right now. It's the biggest problem. Marfling like may not be dragon. expecting to this. Oh. Silent made the rotation to the bottom lane. Now the relocate in. They quickly kill Doom. And this is the power of the Wisp lineup. But... Well, Wisp will die. No, yeah. they're not. They can, they can oh, they can bring the Dragon Eye back. He's got a BKB. They can't go for the Static Storm on him. Yeah. So instead, Empire... Yeah, Moon, Moon just was not expecting that back. He expected them to 5-man into the Tier 2 and was trying to make the most of it. Which is desperate, but kind of expected. And that's why Doom backs himself up, catches out the Morphling, and a quick kill for them. 9-16, to 16. now two more BKBs. We got Dragonite as well as the um, Doom now having their BKBs. Mag's trying to finish up his Aghanims, which he is actually halfway there. I mean, Every, these guys well, just look unkillable. It's pretty much what it comes down to. You've they, got the two supports in the back. Especially, you know, like you said, two BKBs. Panda is just innate tanky. You still have the Wisp relocate to save anybody and the mech. So, Power Rangers. I mean, this is Empire is not even as strong as they can be because they have a three core lineup, it feels like. Brew, Brew feels like a real core to me because you can just disable a person. Then you have another disable coming from the Doom as well. I mean, you're essentially taking two people out of a fight every single time. Yeah, that's, that's actually a pretty good point. Especially since the Morphling, after being shut down so many times by the Doom. Just two deaths is all it needs to seriously be able to delay this Lincolns. He's still trying to work on it, and he's still, like, nowhere near to finishing it up. Like, it, if Empire were to five-man into a Tier 2, take that and immediately try and go uphill, there would be no Lincolns for him. I mean, Centaur's not top. There's no way Resolution can die here. Yeah. We, uh... And he's going to be going for that Kuras, so they're going to have more tankiness. I expect Dune to be going a blink next, so he can just blink in, use his level death, and Doom instantly on the Morphling, and there's all their damage gone in the team fight. <laughs> Centaur. Got to get away in a hurry. He can be doomed, but they don't have any additional disables, so instead they try and go for the Morphling, but he already replicates himself out. They got to get a kill somewhere here, man. They're, they're just being chased away from every single lane they try and go forward on Mag. Uh, they could have caught him there with the Kinetic Field and a Static Storm, possibly, but now the Brewmaster Ultimate's going to go off. FNG failing the glimpse timing there, and Moon comes in trying to help out. Good use of the Static Storm. Morphling is going to try and waveform away, but he's going to be stunned up by Resolution. Possibly. No, he gets himself away. Surprise there. I thought they would do the Centaur stomp from Silent, but they didn't want to. And so they're just going to chase him down. They back up. Looks like they're just going to take the Tier 2. Why not? They've got the Dragonite ultimate already being used. Assault Cura is going to be finished up soon by Resolution. That's just even more pushing power and even more tank. And it's why you see the, these lineups being so popular. The triple core... The, the triple tank lineup, it, it allows you to do these sort of things where you just like five man into the tower rather easily. Chain Frost going to go out. The attempt at initiation failing there from Power Rangers. Scandal's going in pretty deep here, but he is not going to find anybody in the process. Not only was the vacuum a big failure, but the immediate BKB responses from Empire. There was no shot. There was no chance whatsoever for, for Power Rangers, and they know that. So... They call the GG and Empire looking strong as they make their way into the Grand Finals of the Dota 2 Champions League Season 3, wiping Power Rangers in a quick 3-0. Right. So it, it just, I think it comes down to this game more so on the drafting standpoint. Mm. And because they didn't do rotations, they still didn't get a tower down until like 15 minutes of the game. And that was with the split pushing Morphling. So they just need to find a way. I mean, this game is just... Yeah, this is just looked kind of hopeless from the get-go, but still, I mean, Power Rangers put up a fight in the first game, second game, and just this third game is just, eh, their drafting 
this time around, it, it didn't come to fruition. Yeah, it felt like they were just kind of stymied, where game one, they were like, all right, let's go for our typical early aggression pushing style. That flopped. Then they went into game two, they are like, all right, let's switch it up a little bit, let's try and go for some a little bit more late game action, let's have a nice hard carrying morphling, and that flopped as well. I mean, it was looking good early, but then they just killed it going into the mid game. Empire just crushed them um, over and over again with so many pickoffs and, and so many better initiations into the team fights, and... Game three, I mean, where do you go from there? You lost the early game draft. You lost the late game draft. <laughs> it's it's probably one of those sort of things where you're just like, I don't, I don't know how to beat these guys. And honestly, I don't think many teams do. Empire, 3-0 on the books. Going to be able to move on to the finals where they will face the winner of the other semifinal, which is going to be Alliance versus Fnatic. That is going to be another best of five. I don't believe it's been scheduled just yet. Um as Alliance are obviously in China. So once they make their way back and do put in a scheduling, we, of course, will let you guys know. Join Dota.com. Be sure to head over there and check out all the things that we're going to be doing. Because, again, guys, I know a lot of you guys don't like, um, like how we hop around on some of these other services. that We're not always on Twitch. But, hey, it's for the best. Competition is always a good thing, pushing each other and... Well, we're going to be streaming on uh, Daily Motion here, obviously, for the Dota 2 Champions League. But currently, we have the Fnatic MSI uh, Beta Tournament, which is going on a Zubu. So, Toby's actually streaming over there. In fact, I don't know if he's still streaming or not, but uh, that's what he's been doing for most of the evening. So, uh, guys, just go over to joindota.com. That's what that little live and upcoming tab is for. So, you don't have to go hunt around, follow every single one of these channels. Just go to joindota.com, see where we're going to be casting, and... Uh, click that nice and easy little link but that's gonna be it for this one guys gotta thank my co-cast for joining me rio burrows you can follow him at rio burrows dota rio you got any shout outs or anything like that rio uh shout outs to <laughs> thought maybe you fell asleep during my monologue no 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 i, I was <laughs> thinking about all right who do i want to shout out today that i like i was like <laughs> i don't like anybody right now no, I'm just kidding. Wow. I don't know. I just, uh, no shout outs for me today. All just right. keeping it simple. Thanks for having me on, though. Yeah, thanks for joining me, man. It's always, uh, it's always a good time when you're around. I think we make uh, a good pair. But, guys, uh, you follow me at Dota Capitalist. And uh, I will be back um, Thursday. No, Thursday, we're actually moving studios. So I, I think it's just going to be Toby for the next couple of days. We have the, again, the MSI Beta tournament tomorrow. Uh, that continues. That is actually going to be some of the Monday and Tuesday were some of the earlier rounds, so you had a lot of Tier 3 teams uh, competing. But it's actually getting to a point where you're actually getting some some really good games now. So you should definitely check that out tomorrow. I believe that starts at 19 CEST. I'm not quite so sure about that, so just go to joindota.com. And uh, that's it. So we'll see you guys next time on the live stream.